And let's talk about the Congress manifesto. Now, there were several, in fact, highlights, many of which was expected, guarantees for the youth, for the farmers. Uh, there was focus on Nari Shakti. The Congress vowed that if they voted to power, they'll conduct a nationwide caste census, something that Rahul Gandhi has been speaking about through the course of the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra as well. Now, besides that, interestingly, they've spoken about a probe in electoral bonds. They've spoken about getting rid of the state government in Manipur to ensure that there is justice for the people of Manipur. Let's round up for you all the highlights of this manifesto and also reactions that have come in from the BJP. Five pillars are 25 guarantees. The Congress has released its manifesto for the Lok Sabha elections with a focus on Nyai or justice. The document makes a series of promises for the women and the youth. Bharat Jodo Nyai Yatra mein five pillars par ध्यान केंद्रित किया गया था यात्रा के दौरान युवा न्याय किसान न्याय नारी न्याय श्रमिक न्याय और हिस्सेदारी न्याय की घोषणा की गई थी जहां कहीं भी हम गए इन न्याय की बात हमने करी थी और इसकी गारंटी भी हमने दी है one of the biggest talking points in the manifesto is the caste consensus, a political hot topic that has been in the headlines for quite a few months now. In its manifesto, the Congress vowed to conduct a nationwide consensus to identify and enumerate castes. It has promised to waive off student loans, including unpaid interest, if it's voted to power. Congress promised guaranteed jobs to youth with 1 lakh rupees per annum salary and vowed that one woman in every family will get 1 lakh rupees per year. There will be a probe into the controversial electoral bonds that was scrapped by the Supreme Court recently. The party which has been hit by the desertions will make a law that will automatically disqualify MPs and MLAs who defect. At the event to release the manifesto, Rahul Gandhi declared that this election is to save democracy. This election is about those who are trying to destroy the constitution and destroy democracy in this country versus those who are trying to protect the constitution. I don't think democracy has been as much at risk the constitution has been as much at, as at risk as it is today. One omission from the manifesto that raised eyebrows is the silence on bringing back the old pension scheme. In that today post questions to Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi, which were eventually deflected to Congress MP and former finance minister P. Chidambaram. My question is Sonia Gandhi. If you have a राहुल जी आपने ओपीएस को लेके लगातार जो है झंडा बुलंद किया है तमाम सरकारें आपकी उन्होंने ओपीएस का वादा किया था चिदंबरम साहब यू हैड प्रॉमिस्ड ओपीएस एंड इन हिमाचल एंड राजस्थान यू इंप्लीमेंटेड ओपीएस बट इन द मैनिफेस्टो द ओपीएस स्कीम इज मिसिंग सो इज देयर अ रिफ्लेक्स इज देयर अ इंट्रोस्पेक्शन दैट इट्स नॉट वाइबल इकोनॉमिकली इज इट दैट it's not missing as such. It's very much on our minds. But please remember the developments that have taken place in the last four months. The government has appointed a committee headed by the finance secretary to review the NPS and the demand for OPS and to find a way in which the objectives of OPS can be financed by a funded pension scheme. The BJP rained fire on the Congress, accusing the party of not fulfilling promises during its tenure. Zamane mein jitni baar ten se upar mahengai ki dar rahi hai, jab jab negative growth rate rahi hai, toh Congress ke shasan kaal mein rahi. Is liye mahne kaha na, jin ko char pidi tak mauka mila hai, jin ko itne lambe samay tak mauka mila hai, un saare loon ka ab ye dawa hai, the Congress manifesto is high on direct cash transfer welfare schemes, but will it be enough to sway voters?
its promise to implement universal basic income during the 2019 elections had no impact on the voters then. With Mausami Singh in New Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Let me bring in Rahul Gautam on this broadcast. He tracks the Congress very, very closely for us and was there at the press conference as well. Rahul, good evening. You know, we've spoken about all of uh, the big, big mentions in the manifesto and what Moshmi brought up about the old pension scheme. What really are you hearing from your Congress sources about the reasoning behind not having that as part of the manifesto? Well, good evening, Akshita. Uh... In fact, India Today uh, was the first channel who broke this story that how uh, uh, you know, the inclusion of OPS is going to be uh, in the draft. However, uh, the day, a day before uh, you know, the draft was to be uh, presented before CWC to be ratified, uh, Pichi Dambram, who is the former finance minister, took a day off. He went through the, all the details of uh, uh, you know, a draft uh, of the manifesto just to, uh, you know, uh, just to be sure about the financial viability and feasibility. And it appears that uh, finally uh, you know, there has been a consensus that uh, they should not uh, go with it. However, uh, uh, on record of it, uh, Mr. P. Chidamra has, has categorically said that uh, uh, there is a committee uh, which has been formed under the uh, chairmanship of uh, Finance Secretary, which is looking into the National Pension Scheme. Uh, and once uh, the report is going to be out of this NPS uh, a committee, then they're going to take a stance on, uh, on, uh, on OPS as, as to whether they're going to pledge it, uh, pledge it or not. But one thing is very important that Mr. P. Chidamra said that uh, it is very much on their minds and they are actually looking into it. But we have to really understand that, uh, you know, unlike 2014, many uh, in party believe that uh, uh, this time this uh, Nyaya Patro or Manifesto is going to be a very powerful document as uh, in a bid to woo voters and therefore they have come with five Nyaya guarantees and 25 promises which, which are primarily targeting five segments of society, uh, namely youth, women, uh, you know, uh, daily wage laborers, yes. uh, small traders, and, uh, You know, farmers, that was expected and, and because even in the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra, uh, Rahul Gandhi constantly put the focus on this. This was seem, seemingly the theme of the Bharat Jodo Nyaya Yatra as well. Let's run you through 10 promises that you need to know from the Congress manifesto. We've gone through the entire document. Here are 10 quick pointers. Nationwide caste census, something Rahul Gandhi has repeatedly spoken about, is one promise. Let's run you through quickly the others as well. The second one that you need to know is that Rahul Gandhi spoke about this, saying we will ensure an official, a formal investigation into the electoral board. He's called it a scam as well. Job to youth who get 1 lakh rupees per annum. Now, so that is a promise again that's been made. Besides that, one woman in every family to get 1 lakh rupees per year. So uh, you can see, of course, a lot of money being doled out to women, to youngsters. 400 rupees per day minimum wage will be given to farmers. They've made some very interesting points of MSP as well, sticking to their demand. MSP, as per the Swaminathan report, and also they've spoken about ensuring that uh, the Agnipat uh, scheme is scrapped. Now, let's just also uh, talk about uh, the, the fact that the Congress has said that they will raise the 50% cap on reservations. They've spoken about bringing a constitutional amendment to make that possible. And then there's the Mandrega wages, which will be increased. The tenth promise you need to know is that they've mentioned a law for civil unions of the LGBTQ plus couples. So these are some of the highlights that you need to know. Now you've noticed that in a lot of them guarantees with regards to youngsters, women, unemployment and all of that, it's all about doling out money to them to help them. What does that mean economically? Can India actually afford to have those kind of schemes in place? Let's take this across to Managing Editor of Business Today TV, Siddharth Zarabi, who's with us. Siddharth, good evening. What do you make of uh, the Congress manifesto, speaking about it also from a financial aspect? Do you think, you know, it's viable for the Indian economy? Of course, MSP is something that everyone's debated time in and time out. But the other point is with regards to the money doles that they're planning for youngsters and for women. Uh, well, uh, very clearly, uh, it's a rerun of the 2019 uh, manifesto of the Congress, and it's obviously uh, a manifesto with many promises which are really on steroids in some ways, including what, uh, uh, what we would say is basically taking a lot of money and giving it amongst three or four clear-cut in, uh, interest groups, the farmers, uh, women, students, and of course those youth uh, who have been upset with the Agnipath scheme. In terms of the fiscal impact, let me just give you some 
uh, data because uh, several economists that we have reached out to, people are working on the data, and it's not very clear as to what the impact will be straight off. But just some numbers. The education loan that was given out to students as of financial year 23 was 97 thousand crore let's assume that the congress and you know what happens when the fine print comes but let's assume that this is the entire uh, write off of the student loan that's close to 1 lakh crore and more in terms of the impact let's take the agnipath scheme uh, uh, orf study had said over a period of 22 years starting in 2022 till almost 2044, the total savings on account of the Agnipath scheme were close to 2 lakh 80, uh, 2 lakh 19,000 crore. And in the five years, uh, let, starting from 2024 till the term of the next government for five years, if you take that data, it's 25,000 crore. Now let's go to uh, the MSP. Uh, formula, which by the way, the UPA had rejected the Swaminathan formula. Uh, mm. There are various estimates and one of those estimates says 10 lakh crore will be the burden as far as uh, uh, MSP of this sort is concerned. So add that. Uh, how do we add the uh, fiscal impact of the scheme for women? Uh, again, very tough to uh, get an accurate number because it will depend on the eligibility of the women who qualify uh, for that yeah. scheme were the Congress to come to power. There are several other elements including for example 400 rupees in the Mandrega scheme. Again depending on the total number of mandates created you can add a very substantial amount. So the fiscal impact of all of these promises if they were to be added on top of the existing welfare schemes which any government will find very difficult to do away with. The BJP didn't do away with uh, Mandrega when it came to power. So if you okay. add the total impact, it's going to be very, very significant fiscally. Remember that in the past uh, financial year, total tax revenues of the center are 35 lakh crore. And by some mm -hmm. estimates, if this were to be a plain factual reading, uh, this could mean m multiple lakhs of crores in terms of additional expenditure. But we'll have to wait for the fine print really to give a very uh, clear-cut, accurate number. To get a definitive number, yes, we'll need more details from the Congress perhaps uh, with regards to the nitty-gritties of how some of those schemes will work out. Thanks very much, Siddharth, for joining us with your analysis. They're very helpful in understanding what really will be the financial impact of some of the schemes that the Congress has referred to, has promised in their manifesto. Now, as we speak of the BJP's reaction, they have meanwhile referred to the manifesto and some pictures that have been used in this manifesto. That pictures from Thailand for environment and pictures from New York for waste management have been used in the manifesto. So here's a response that's come in from the BJP saying that the Congress seems to have forgotten they were working for a manifesto and rather that they've put together a holiday itinerary for Rahul Gandhi. आपने कांग्रेस कांग्रेस के के मैनिफेस्टो में में देखा होगा ये ये वाटर मैनेजमेंट ऊपर फोटो है देखिए इसको जाके आप चेक कर लीजिएगा न्यूयॉर्क की बफेलो लिवर की है अब देखिए मुझे लगता है कि अभी तक उनकी सोशल मीडिया चेयरपर्सन के अकाउंट से किसने ट्वीट कर दिया था तो पता नहीं लगा पाए पर उससे बड़ा यक्ष प्रश्न हो गया है ये फोटो कौन भेज रहा है विदेश से मतलब ऑन द लाइटर नोट में कहना चाहूंगा बफेले शब्द को हिंदी में भैंस कहते हैं और हिंदी में कहावत होती है अकल बड़ी है भैंस तो मुझे लगता है उतनी अकल भी किसी ने प्रयोग नहीं की है इनको करने के लिए अब आइए साहब इन्वायरमेंटल क्लीनिनेस के ऊपर ये फोटो है और ये जानते कहां की है द मोस्ट फेवर्ड एंड शॉर्ट ऑफ डेस्टिनेशन ऑफ चिर युवा ऑफ इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स राहुल गांधी जी का थाईलैंड के Okay, let me bring in Polomi Saha on this broadcast. Polomi, away from, of course, the taunt on the photos that have been used in the manifesto. There are several guarantees, promises that the Congress has made. What's been the BJP's response? And with the BJP manifesto also expected in a week or so, uh, will some of these issues kind of also weigh in on their manifesto decisions? Because there are a whole lot of guarantees uh, that the Congress has made. 
Well, uh, as far as uh, the BJP is concerned, uh, they've taken pot shots at the Congress and asked when they, in fact, uh, were in governance, why didn't they implement any of these promises that they seem to be making only now? Didn't they care enough uh, at that point of time for farmers, for the youth, for the women of the uh, country, for the downtrodden of uh, the country, the poorest of the poor? What happened at that point of time? What sort of measures uh, were taken by them in order to uh, correct, uh, uh, you know, social equity levels and economic equity levels across uh, the country? Uh, the BJP asked that when the Congress makes a poll promise and a guarantee now that every uh, graduate will be guaranteed a first job with one lakh a salary, in fact, as uh, per annum, then what happened to the 72,000 rupees which was promised earlier by the Congress, by, the, by Rahul Gandhi himself in 2019? What happened to that promise? What about fulfilling these promises in the states where they are in governance, including, of course, uh, the state of uh, Telangana, for instance, or were in governance up until recently, like Rajasthan or uh, Chhattisgarh. So that is what the BJP is saying. As far as the BJP's own manifesto is concerned, it is, of course, uh, you know, there have been hectic uh, discussions already about it, at least two meetings of uh, the 27-member 27, 27 okay. election committee under the chairmanship of Rajnath Singh has taken place, possibly uh, before the first phase of uh, the Lok Sabha elections on April 19. It will be released and it will focus on, of course, Viksit Bharat, the vision for 2047, as also uh, the acronym, which has been coined by Prime Minister Modi, which is Gyan, which is Garib, Yuva, Anadata, which is the farmer, and N, sure. which stands for Nari, women. All right. Thanks very much, Paul May, for getting us those details. We'll, of course, await all that we can get on the BJP manifesto for the moment. The Congress has released their manifesto in the run-up to the general election. Let's cut across, in fact, to breaking news that's coming in now. All right, this is a big update that's coming in on the Rameshwaram Cafe blast that took place in Bengaluru and the investigation into that after the Congress claimed that the NIA has detained a BGP worker in Shivamoga as part of the investigation. Sources tell us here on India Today that the BGP worker in question, identified as Sai Prasad, uh, as well as a mobile shop owner, have been detained and interrogated by the NIA. But the interrogation by the NIA was aimed to make two witnesses in the case. Reportedly, the BJP worker here, Sai Prasad, had sold an old mobile phone to the mobile shop owner. The shop owner had then sold it to Muzamil of Chikmagaluru, who's been arrested and is currently under NIA custody. Muzamil was in contact with the accused using the same mobile phone. He used this to connect with the other two accused who are absconding, Abdul Mateen Taha, as well as Muzavir Hussain, using that mobile. So it was, in fact, when the NIA uh, got hold of this phone that they found that it belonged to Sai Prasad, which is why they were interrogated by the NIA to obtain their statement. So not as an accused, but as a witness is what our sources tell us. Here of high drama once again for the Ahmad Bay party with Sanjay Singh making explosive claims to Bhagat Singh's kin slamming the Ahmad Bay party for that big picture of Arvind K. Jival, a portrait of him with a jail bar scene and post uh, and right next to in fact Bhagat Singh as well as Ambedkar. Now, that led to a big political showdown, but that's not all. The election commission today also issued a notice to Atishi uh, for, in fact, her claims that they were attempts by the BJP to poach her. Let's get you a roundup of all those updates. Delhi is witnessing frenetic political developments as the Aam Admi Party tries to fight back after the arrest of Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. Two days after being released from Tihar jail on bail, AAP MP Sanjay Singh held a press meet on Friday. Singh alleged the BJP is involved in the liquor gate scam. This sharab ghotala ghotala ghotala. This sharab ghotala. Dunya ki sabse badi party Bharati Janata Party ne kiya hai. Iske andar koi chote mote log saamil nahi hai. Bharti Janta Party ke sirs netritv ke log isme shamil hai. Baap bete ke nao bayano me kahi bhi Arvind Kejriwal ka jikr nahi. Aur baad me Arvind Kejriwal ka naam usse jabran 
दबाव बनाकर अरविंद केजरीवाल के खिलाफ उससे बयान दिलवाया जाता है मोर फ्लैश पॉइंट है The election commission has issued a notice to Delhi Minister Atishi based on a complaint by the BJP over her statement that she is under pressure to join them. Election Commission of India ke notice ki khabar pehle Bharatiya Janata Party media mein plant karti hai uske baad Election Commission of India notice deti hai. Main Sunita Kejriwal Chief Minister Kejriwal's wife Sunita Kejriwal has been releasing video messages attributed to the Chief Minister. The new ones have an image of Kejriwal behind bars placed between photos of Bhagat Singh and Ambedkar. In one of the messages she had compared Kejriwal with freedom fighters. Sachche deshbhakt hain ve. Bilkul aise hi hamare swatantrata senani angrezon ki tanashai se ladte the. पिछले तीस साल से मैं उनके साथ हूं देशभक्ति उनके रोम रोम में बसी है अरविंद जी ने देश की सबसे ताकतवर भ्रष्टाचारी और तानाशाही ताकतों को ललकारा है आपकी केजरीवाल जी ने दम्पेरिजन स्पॉक एंग्री रिएक्शन फ्रॉम भगत सिंह फैमिली एंड बीजेपी जिस तरह की दलगत राजनीति हमें देखने को मिलती है तो मुझे नहीं लगता की ये शोभा देता है की उनकी तुलना भगत सिंह जी के साथ केजरीवाल या किसी और राजनेता की भी करनी चाहिए सुनीता जी से कहूंगा केजरीवाल जी से कि किसी ने अगर उनसे ऐसा करा दिया तो इसको वो आगे अपोलोजाइज करें और ऐसा भविष्य में ना करें आप सोच के देखिए बाबा अम्बेडकर जी क्या सोचते होंगे शहीद भगत सिंह क्या सोचते होंगे ऐसे भ्रष्ट और करप्ट लोगों के साथ हमारी फोटो टांग दी ये देश के लिए लड़ने वाले लोग थे और ये परिवार के लिए धन इकट्ठा करते हुए शराब घोटाला करते हुए जेल गए लोग हैं सुनीता जी आपको ये पाप नहीं करना चाहिए था आपने बहुत बड़ा पाप किया है Former Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia wrote a letter from the jail. Sisodia called Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela his inspiration. Meanwhile, Delhi LG Vinay Saxena's office has written a letter to the Union Home Secretary flagging off alleged violations by the Delhi government. The letter claims the Delhi government is presenting false affidavits and misleading quotes against the LG office. With Amit Bharadwaj in Delhi and Kamaljit Sandhu in Chandigarh, Bureau Report, India Today. And with just weeks to go for the Lok Sabha elections, here's a roundup of all the stories you need to know. Prime Minister Modi held a mega rally in Churu, a jhat land in Rajasthan. This is the Prime Minister's second Rajasthan visit in the last three days. Prime Minister once again exuded confidence that he will win a consecutive third term and hinted at major decisions in the Modi 3.0 government. BJP Chief JP Nadda conducted a mega road show in the temple city of Haridwar. He also offered prayers at the Maya Devi Temple and slammed Congress for using religion only for me elections. The Congress has given an ultimatum to former MP Papu Yadav who recently joined the party but is contesting as an independent from Purnia and reportedly Papu Yadav is firm on his decision remember during seat sharing talks Purnia fell to RJD Skitty and they fielded Bhima Bharti from this constituency West Bengal governor CV Anand Bose has asked TMC led state government to remove education minister Bratya Basu from the cabinet for deliberately violating the model code of conduct by holding a meeting with politicians at a state run university. An independent candidate contesting from Tamil Nadu's Rameshwaram Lok Sabha seat Ramanathapuram turned into a barber for a day on the campaign trail. The candidate Pari Rajan was also seen giving a shave to a person. And in the run up to the elections let's get you ground reports as well this one from Mysuru which is seen as one between chief minister Sidramaiah and the royal scion Yadavir Wodeyar the congress has fielded M Lakshman it's a bastion of the congress as well uh, and the battle is being projected by the grand old party is the battle of the common man versus a king team india today was on ground and in the midst of this heated poll campaign we spoke with both candidates <laughs>
considered a stronghold of Chief Minister Siddaramaiya, the Mysuru Lok Sabha constituency faces an intensifying contest. The historical city of Karnataka, Mysore, is going to witness a high voltage battle as BJP fielded the king of Mysore, Yadavir Krishnadatta Chamaraja Vadaya, to take against Congress. Coincidentally, it is also the home turf of Congress king Siddaramaiya, and it is a battle of prestige for Siddaramaiya to win Mysore, and it is a bastion of BJP since 1998 and they are quite confident by fielding Maharaja they are going to retain the Mysuru city. Congress has nominated M. Lakshman to face off against Yaduvir Krishnadatta Chamaraja Vadya from the BJP. Historically, Congress dominated Mysuru, but the BJP has made significant gains in recent years, winning the seat twice consecutively in 2014 and 2019. The BJP's decision to replace incumbent MP Pratap Simha with Yaduvir Wadiyar has stirred controversy. Especially among the Vokaliga community, prompting Congress to recalibrate its strategy. Our candidate in 2009 has won election from Congress party. After that, of course, we have lost. But this time we are going to repeat, like what this BJP has done. The BJP has won uh, 2019 elections only because of uh, surgical strike, fake surgical strike. And that is not and going fake, to work this time. Even you know, they, they're fake Pulwama. Uh -huh. All those things, you know, they brought emotional issues and they won. With Pokalaga voters comprising a significant portion of the nearly 2.7 million electorate. Lakshman brings academic and civic experience to the forefront. We will be able to win more than 22 seats in Karnataka only because of our developmental activities and guarantee schemes which we have reached to everybody. Yadubir Vadiar, educated in the US, holds a BA in economics and English. You need effective leadership at the center in order to deliver on the ground. Yeah, the same way a company requires an effective CEO for a ground-level worker to uh, conduct his affairs, you need effective leadership. In that, I think the BJP is far, far outpaced any other competitors on the field. Uh, and in being a bridge to the Prime Minister's work here in Mysore, I look forward to that. And um, will surely people will judge us on our ability to do so and uh, our aptitude for the job as well. Congress remains formidable, boosted by the success in state elections, while BJP relies on the Modi factor and Yaduvir's royal lineage. Where do you see yourself on the judgment day in the first week of June? I see myself uh, winning uh, comfortably. A fiercely contested battle for power in a constituency with a strong caste arithmetic and royal aura. With Sagairaj, Bureau Report, India Today.